the surface area of cubes and rectangular solids. So the surface area of any solid is just the sum of the areas of all the faces. Let's put that down. And notice we're talking about surface, so that's like the outside, the part that you can touch. I think it's easiest to see a couple of examples and to see how um, we go about calculating it. So if we've got a box that looks uh, like this, um, try to draw this in 3D for you, and we'll assume that all of these things are rectangles and squares, and I'll add some units onto them. So this whole length here is 15. These top little pieces here could be, say, 4 centimeters. Uh, the height up and down here will make 5 centimeters. The height up and down here will make 6 centimeters. And the width across this way will make 3 centimeters. And that's true across the whole thing. So this is a... Um, rectangular solid. It's basically a solid built up of rectangular pieces. And the way that we go about figuring out the surface area is to add up all the different little rectangular surface pieces. And so the way I like to do this is I like to divide it into um, little rectangles that I can uh, calculate the areas for. And what I do is I start labeling them. So I say, oh, this is area 1, and this is area 2, and on the back here, on the top, there'd be an area 1, and on the back down here, there'd be an area 2, and then this top piece is an area 3, and an area 4, oops, area 4, and this would be, say, area 5, area 6, there'd be one on this side here, we'll call that area 7, and don't forget the bottom, that would be area 8. And so the total surface area for this entire shape, the surface area would be, well, I've got two area number 1s, and I've got two area number 2s, and I've got an area number 3, and an area number 4, and an area number 5, and an area number 6, and an area number 7, and an area number 8. And in this case, all of those are rectangles. So the two times, well, area 1, I just have to figure out the length and the width, and that's 4 by 5, so 4 times 5. And then area 2 is, oh yeah, this big rectangle uh, on the front here, so 15 by 6, 15 times 6. And I just keep going, so area 3 is on the top here, that's 3 across and 4 wide, so add a 3 by 4, don't need two addition signs, and area 4 is 5 high and 3 across, so 5 by 3, and area four, 5 I'm up to now, um, that's 3 across, and the distance along this part, well, that's 4, that's 15, so this one's 11, so it's 3 by 11, and an area 6 is this end piece, which is 6 by 3, and then I've got a rectangle that's over on this side over here that's 3 by 11. 3 by, and the reason that it's 11 is there's a 5 and a 6, so the total height this way is 11. And then the last one is the bottom, which is 3 by 15. 15 across this way, 3 across this way. An alternate way to do this is to lay the object out flat as what's called a net. Um, if you go and flatten it out, essentially the bottom looks like this, and the sides start to look like this, and the ends fold like this, and then there's top piece here, and a little chunk that comes off of this top piece, and another piece that goes across here. And it gets quite confusing with these 3D shapes to draw their nets. So instead, or... Um, it's basically an alternate way of doing it. You're, you're welcome to do the nets, and for some objects, actually, the nets are a little bit easier. Um, I suggest that you label all the sides, A1, A2, A3, A4, and if you can see ones that are the same, like area 1 here is the same on the front, the, the shape that I chose for area 1 is exactly the same as the area 1 that would be in the back back there, and same with area 2. If you can see ones that you absolutely know are the same, then you can use this idea of, well, I can just double it. Uh, if you're not sure, um, you know, is 
is this face that I'll just do in light blue, is that one the same as this one? If you're not sure, they might look the same, but when you actually go see, oh, this is 5, but this is 6, then um, you can start to see that they're not the same shape. Um, so you can check and see, but uh, you can't use this doubling technique unless you're absolutely sure they're exactly the same shape, and they won't always be. Now it just becomes calculator question. So you go and crunch all of these numbers, and you come up with an answer, and that would be 376. And then the units are important. It's centimeters squared. And so a little note for you here, in case you've forgotten, uh, surface area is always, just like area is, it's in square units. And so the square units are, in this case, centimeters, so centimeters squared. Let's take a look at another example. So here's our rectangular prism, uh, kind of composite rectangular prism here. And uh, again, we'll add some dimensions onto it. So this can be 16 centimeters across the bottom. And we'll make this 2 centimeters. Uh, it's definitely not to scale. 6 centimeters, 3 centimeters, and 5 centimeters. And this little tiny part up here will just make 1 centimeter tall. So it's a little bit to scale. And you can see I've got some wavy lines in there, but uh, we'll just make an assumption that everything is a rectangle. So um, we don't need to go and say that the opposite sides are parallel and there's all these 90 degree angles and stuff. We'll just uh, assume that everything is a rectangle. And now we have to start breaking it into pieces. So let's let's do that. So And it doesn't really matter where you start. So um, we got a little area one on this side that's 3 by 5. And guess what? On the back over here, there's also an area that's exactly the same. It's uh, three high and five across. So those are both area number ones. Um, I've got a big face on the front that I could call area two, and there'd be a big face on the back also called area two. This one would be area three, and on the back of here, there would be an area three. Um, this side piece we could call area four, and it's one centimeter by three. Five, so so is the one on this side, so that's also an area 4. Uh, I've got a big chunk on the bottom called area 5, and this is a neat little trick. That big chunk on the bottom is a huge rectangle, and if you were to look up at the bottom, you would see that entire area uh, as your um, surface. And if you did the same thing on the top and you looked straight down, you would see this entire area from a bird's eye view. And so the bottom, area 5, and those three pieces together would also have to be area 5. So this plus this plus this would have to be the same as the bottom. So let's check that I've got everything. I've got the sides, area 1 and area 1. I've got the front and back is area 2 and area 3 twice. Uh, I've got the bottom and all three of those top sides, and then those two little area 4 bits. So that's perfect. Let's write it out. I have two area 1s and two area 2s and two area threes, and two area fours, and two area fives. Don't worry about, oh, well, I could have just had an area one, and an area two, and an area three, and an area four, and an area five, and then doubled it all. Um, you're welcome to do that as well, but I think it's easier to actually just count them up. Um, and this trick of this area 5 is huge when you're doing these problem solving because you don't have to call like, oh, this is area 6 and this is area 7 and this is area... It's not wrong, it's just going to take you way more work to do. So we start to put numbers in. Area 1, those were the end pieces. Those are 3 by 5. And there's two area 2s. Those are big. They're 16 by 3. And there's two area 3s. That's one high... And, oh, I don't know how far across they are. Well, this is 2, and this is 6, so that's 8. So they're 8 across. They don't look like they're 8 across, but they're 8 across and 1 high. So this distance here is 8, and this is 1 high for the area 3s. The area 4s are 1 high and 5 across, because all of these dimensions are 5. Oh, and there's 2 of those. So two of those, and two area fives. And area fives are big. They're 16 by 5. Uh, and the top one is 16 by 5 
if you add up all the little pieces. So again, we go grab the calculator and we calculate this and you get a final answer of 312 centimeters squared. If you show that kind of work, so you might want some different colors, um, help me explain it to you. Um, what I'm really looking for is how do you divide up your work? What are your formulas? So all these little formulas. That's going to be important, especially when our shapes get more complicated later in this unit. And then, of course, a final answer would be nice with the right units. Make sure you've got those units. These are probably going to be three or four mark questions, each one. Um, and as they become, as I said, more complicated, we need to be able to follow a pattern of how to set up. If you just give me an answer or if your work is all over the place and I have a hard time following it, I'm going to have a hard time giving you the marks. So um, this way of organizing yourself, I find, is really, really, really helpful. All right, uh, we'll see you in class.